Welcome guys, I'm a dad. I'm the dad that owns this truck. That's right, this is my truck. I've been owning the truck now for about a year and about a thousand kilometers. And I realize it's time for us to let it go. This truck was probably the most popular video that we had on the channel in the last year. And a lot of people wanted to know more about the truck and a lot of people wanted to buy it. And so now is your chance. You're gonna learn about the truck and you're gonna get a chance to buy it. And you, whether you're a dad or not, can be cool. You can impress your girlfriend, you can impress your kids, you can impress your dad. Before we get into the condition of the vehicle, I want to say that the vehicle is for sale for 1,650,000 yen. Yes, the vehicle is in Japan, but we ship worldwide to countries wherever you are. Do keep in mind though that that price of 1,650,000 yen is including the price of the car and the price of the export, but not the price of shipping. The vehicle is legal for many countries around the world. Do keep in mind though, because we get a lot of viewers from the USA, that this vehicle is not legal for the USA. If you're concerned about the import regulations for your country, send us a quick email and we'll be able to fill you in on all of the details that you need to know. It's a 2003 Toyota Dyna. This one is a TRY230. It's a two liter gasoline engine, quad cab, large box, thousand kilograms payload. I bought it for myself because I liked it a lot. It has 100 and 116,000 kilometers on it right now, so very low mileage, and the condition of it is quite good. Of course, there are some issues here and there, and I'll get to those by the end of the video. But overall, I've been very happy with the vehicle. It hasn't left me stranded. The vehicle is just so crazy looking. That's why I bought it. I just looked at the picture and I was like, gotta have that truck. So I bought it. You know, I'm in a pretty nice position to be able to do that when I see a vehicle. And just like a lot of you guys, you, browse the auction and you're like, gotta have that car. That's me too. The vehicle puts out 135 horsepower, which doesn't sound like a lot from its two liter twin cam gasoline engine with variable valve timing. Although the power is a little bit low, the torque is high. It's also known to be extremely reliable. This engine, the 1TR engine, is in the same engine family as the 2TR, which is the 2.7 liter engine that you can buy in the Toyota Tacoma, and it was in the High Ace, and it was in the Dyna and the Toyo Ace, and uh, many other vehicles. Known to be extremely, extremely reliable. We're talking about 400,000 kilometers and up. This one has a manual transmission, which is exactly what I want. Like, not many trucks around the world have a manual transmission, especially one that looks this cool. The bed. Um, decent size, it does have the tire humps, as you can see, uh, but you can fit a lot of stuff in here. And not only that, but you've got the back rack here. The back rack allows you to carry longer things, like if you've got long lumber, you can set that at an angle across here, resting up on here, and then tie it around. And you see that an awful lot in Japan. This kind of truck, like this is based off of a work truck. I know that it's been lifted. I know it looks really cool now, but the bones of this are a, a work truck. So the first thing you'll notice on the vehicle is it's huge. The vehicle has been lifted up. Now the full lift, have a look inside here. It's all chassis lift. There is no suspension lift on the vehicle at all. Now you can probably put some suspension lift on if you want to make it bigger, but the lift here has all been custom made. Now a lot of people wanted to know what kit that we use for this. Actually, we bought the vehicle like this, but if you take a look, it's not a kit. This is all fully custom. So every mounting point on the chassis has had an eight inch extension put onto it. And this extension is all the way down the vehicle. So for the bed and for the cab. Now the bed doesn't have any bushings in it, but the cab has the full original bushings between the lift and the chassis. And so it doesn't have any kind of harshness that you might expect on a body lift such as this. So a lot of people, like me, are obsessed with Toyota trucks. As you can see, it says Toyota on the back, just like those 
1970s and 1980s Toyota trucks that we all love. What makes the Dyna really special is that this is the top level industrial truck that Toyota makes. You get the full industrial bed, and this one has the crew cab. Have a look. Doors here, and doors here. That makes you have six seats between the front and the rear, or the back section. You can flip the seats up. So have a quick look. This seat here, you can push this up, and it'll give you a full flat floor in there to do whatever you want with. So part of the great looks of the vehicle are the front end. You take a look and the headlights on it are aggressive and fully clear and very bright. They are an aftermarket front headlight, but I think that the style of them works really well with the painted bumper and the bush guard on here with the extra fog lights in the bush guard. I think the package of this, watching it come down the street and how large the vehicle is and how aggressive the front end is, I think it's an excellent look. I love the Toyota logo. This is very 1970s, 1980s, and it's really coming back. Like the Land Cruiser 300 now, you can get it with a Toyota grill. You can get the Land Cruiser 250 with a Toyota grill. The new 70 series is coming out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy a new 70 series, and this one here paved the way for me. This is my holdover vehicle until the new 70 series comes out, if you think about it. Part of the lift is a larger tire than stock. As you can see, these are pretty large. The tire size here is a 285-65 R17, and these tires are DOT tires, so that might matter for where you're importing to. And the tires come from 2016, so they're still an appropriate age to continue to use. And the amount of tread on them is somewhere in the range of about 70 to 80% left. So these are still good tires you can continue to use. So to fit big tires like this, you need over fenders. This is actually a legal requirement in Japan if the tires are gonna be coming out past the fender. These over fenders look awesome. I am a big, big fan of these and I've never seen a Dyna with over fenders because they don't actually make them. There is no kit for over fenders for this vehicle available in the aftermarket. These have been moved over from another vehicle and as a result, they're not a perfect fit. If you take a look in here, they don't exactly line up. And the one in the rear actually has a little cutout here for a fuel filler from whatever vehicle that they come from. And yeah, as you can see on the other side here, there's no cutout for the fuel filler on this side. The underside of the truck, completely rust free. If you have a look up here, there's no sections that you have to be worried about. There's a tiny bit of surface stuff on the very bottom of the bed but there's no corrosion anywhere and everything looks like it's gonna be good for years to come. Okay, a quick opening of the bed. Simple handles here. They are a little stiff and noisy, but it opens up easily. There you go. Now, if you are using it as a truck, the loading is going to be a little bit high. This is right at waist height for me, and I'm a five foot 10 man or 178 centimeters. And something about this, this one here is a safety rail. It's required for Japanese law, and it's been custom made so that things can't roll underneath your vehicle. Some countries require these, most countries don't, and it's just a simple bar that has been welded onto an extender, has been attached to the underside of the vehicle. So the interior of these trucks is made for burly men, and so you get plenty of room in here. This is three seats across with full seat belts, and you've got the three-point seat belt for the outside two only. It's a lap belt for the center one. The seat here is a seat cover. It's an aftermarket seat cover, and it's a leather look. It's not real leather, and that goes for all six seats in the vehicle. Our leg room here, plenty. You got a bar to hold on here when the driver's driving too crazily. Having a look at the interior now for the driver's section, you'll see it has an aftermarket steering wheel. This is a, a very nice high-end Nardi steering wheel. The size is quite small though. It's a little bit awkward as a result. I personally would recommend changing the steering wheel on this one. Original shift knob, an e-brake handle here, and the proper three pedals. Most of these trucks don't have power windows or they might have them on the front only and not on the back. This one has the four window power windows.
You want the back ones undone? You can do that too. It has power windows, which sounds weird. Everything has power windows, but not all of these dynas do, or the Toyo Aces or the high ace trucks. This box down here is a ETC box, and you put a card in, and then it will charge the tolls directly to your credit card. It doesn't work outside of Japan, but some people still kind of like that. It speaks in Japanese to you when you start the car, reminds you that, hey, I'm driving a Japanese vehicle. There's a double DIN unit here for audio. Now this does AM, FM radio, as well as Bluetooth audio, but it will play you TV if you want, but only in Japan. The rear view mirror here is a full camera, and this is a drive recorder as well. This records your forward position and your rear position. It's very nice at nighttime. It gives you a very clear image of everything behind you at night, even with headlights on and whatnot. It's a very nice unit. I want to get into the issues with the vehicle as well. I think it's responsible for a salesperson to explain everything that's wrong with the vehicle as well as everything that's right. I think the truck has a lot that's right about it, but let's get into some of the details for what we don't like about the vehicle. The front bush bar is put on with a custom job. This isn't suitable for this truck. The custom welding in here wasn't done very well, and this isn't a structural piece as a result. You can see it moves around a little bit. It's basically just for show. The mirror handles here have a few chips in them, a little bit of surface rust around the edges. The sides of the bed here have a few dents, or dents from the other side, right? So this has been used as an industrial truck. So you get some things knocking the side here, leaving some wavy sections. And so have a good look at the side, and maybe we'll get an extra video showing this, just the side without me here. And there's waviness, and some uneven paint in some areas as a result. And that's on both sides, and to some extent the tailgate as well. The mud guards on the back are awesome. Unfortunately, they're only 96% of a mud guard, and some of the Toyota logo is missing. Now, the reason why is actually my fault. They were all good when I got the vehicle. These can, when you go in reverse, get stuck on the tire, because the tire is larger, and as a result, that's how they get ripped. This is the case over here and on the other side over here. The inside of the bed, and this is a big one. Come have a look. So whoever used the truck before had some sort of a love affair with putties. I think that it was just slop that was just got everywhere kind of thing. Some of these uh, tire houses are dented and you can see the putty. That's been painted over now, but it is a texture everywhere in here. Now also, if you take a look in areas like this, the vehicle had some rust in the back here and has also been sanded down and painted over. Now this is still solid, but it is an issue. You'll see that here, and especially at this front corner here. This area here had the most amount of rust it was sanded down the most, and I think it's fine. It's sealed pretty well, as you can see. But it is an issue on the truck, so do consider that. The interior here is mostly good with one big exception, in that there's paint on it. Looks like the previous owners of this vehicle were painters, and some sections in the back here, and I'll lift this up so you can see better. There's paint that you can't get off on the rubber mat here. Also underneath of the mat, you can see some things like some paint here, over here, over there. I've tried paint thinner, I couldn't get it off. There's some chance you'll have to like completely just paint this into a new color in order to get rid of that or just rock it like that. As you can see here, the interior is blue. The truck used to be blue and the outside has all been painted in the cool sand color, the interior hasn't been repainted. And you'll notice that blue color here, as well as along here and along here. And you've got a blue interior. Now, another thing about the interior here is this is slightly sagging down. If you take a look, it's kind of wavy. Hope you can see that. And the same thing goes for the front of it too. I guess there's a negative of getting in, but there is a step down here and a handle up here. It's not that hard, but if you're a 
tiny person it could be. Now the floor mat here has some rips in it. It, um, there's a hole. These things you should be able to get fairly easily as aftermarket if you wanted to get a replacement for it. This area here next to the shift knob has some melted sections from cigarette burns. There's quite a few of them. They're all relatively small. And the interior of the vehicle doesn't smell of cigarettes because there's nothing for it to get absorbed into. And so I don't really think that it smells. It has like a, uh, a smell of a car, but not of a cigarette inside. Oh, oh, that's nice. That's probably the best smelling seat cover. So the car used to have this aftermarket keyless entry. It had it when I had the vehicle. But the problem is this keyless entry would flash a light on the dashboard here. And so if you don't drive the car in like three months, like I did, the battery will drain itself. As a result, I've taken that out. I don't want to sell the vehicle and have it destroy the battery. And it really did. I went through two batteries within the year that I owned this, because if you don't drive it, it'll drain the battery. Even if you only marginally drain the battery and the vehicle can still start, it's still going to tap like, what, what's the word I'm looking for? It's going to cause the alternator to work more in order to charge that battery up and it'll wear out the alternator over time. So I feel like it's small price to pay for a more reliable vehicle. So we had a shop remove it. While there are no scratches on the car really anywhere, there are some chips right on the edge of the door here and it has resulted in a little bit of surface rust coming in through those chips, just a tiny bit. You see the over fender here has just a little bit of a weird texture on it. That's not dirtiness, that's just a weird texture on it. You probably have to be painted to get rid of that. And the over fenders here, they are screwed right in. So screwed right into the door, screwed right into the panel here, and likewise on the bed, they're screwed right in. So driving this truck is an adventure. You get so many looks from everybody here in Japan and I'm sure outside of Japan, it's gonna be the same. It is a big, amazing vehicle and everyone's like, what is that? That thing is so cool. Meanwhile, you're sitting in the truck way above everybody else and kind of looking down on all the vehicles around you. This isn't something that comes like it's easy to see in a video because videos never really show you the reality of the situation. But here's a high ace, which is a big vehicle with a very tall seating position. And I'm well above that person. It's very incredibly unique. Driving is pretty easy. The visibility is great all the way around you. You can pull right up to stuff because the front of the vehicle is just cut off. It's a windshield and it goes down from there. So it's very easy to see exactly how far you are away from corners or people, pedestrians, other cars. Your visibility outside the side windows is really good. The seating position is fine. Um, I don't really have, I don't really have an issue with it. Um, everyone has their own feeling of what seating position is good and what they don't like, but I don't have an issue with this whatsoever. The steering wheel is a little on the, like it's tilt steering, but it's a little flat feeling. Like most of the time when you're in a car, the steering wheel is more perpendicular with their, with your body. This one feels like it's laid over, like and you can use it as a table almost. And because it's a small steering wheel, it's a little awkward to use, honestly. But like I said before, if this were my vehicle, I'd want to change the steering wheel. The power steering works fine, but watch this. Whoa, oh, tipping, over. tipping over, but not really. I'm sure you could take the corners pretty fast before you tip over, but it's an aftermarket lift. Don't go around the corners incredibly fast for fear of tipping over. I don't really think it's something that you need to worry about, but it's something to consider before you buy the vehicle. You're gonna have to take corners at a speed that's appropriate for the height. If you've had a lifted vehicle before, then you know the drill on something like that. A couple of things about driving it that I don't like. Number one, the clutch can be a little bit touchy until you get used to it. You might've even noticed me as I'm driving now. Uh, the engagement point is just a little bit awkward. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just how these trucks are, but it's a little bit different. Definitely get used to it. First and second gear are excellent. They're nice and low range, so you can actually accelerate really quickly despite the small-ish engine. Third gear, fourth gear, and fifth gear are all fairly tall. And what that means is you don't get a lot of power in those gears. 
you have plenty of power in first and second, but third and up, it feels like a big shift up. I will say at speeds, I think the bigger tires are maybe not balanced the best, and over 100 kilometers an hour, you can feel a little bit of a vibration. That's a tire issue, it's nothing more than that. The suspension and the brakes and the steering, everything works fine, everything is good. The brakes on it though, it's not a sports car. Leave yourself ample room to brake and you're gonna be good. One thing I really like about the vehicle is also one thing I don't like about the, the vehicle. These trucks are meant to go down any road in Japan no matter how tight that the road is. And so the turning circle on this is incredibly tight. You can almost drive sideways from your position here if you crank the steering wheel all the way, which is awesome, I love it. The problem, mind you, is when you put tires on the vehicle that are too big for it, you're gonna get rubbing. It's not a lot, and the rubbing, the, the time that it starts rubbing, you're already turning tighter than most cars can already turn. It's only at the very end, and it's only subtle. It doesn't bother me enough to downgrade the size of the tires because the vehicle is completely maneuverable. If you feel the tires rub, and you will, then back off a little bit. You're still turning really tightly. Okay, guys. You're gonna hate me for this, and I have been flamed for it. The biggest problem with the truck, it looks like a four-wheel drive truck. It's not, it's a two-wheel drive truck. It was built off of a two-wheel drive Dyna, which is how you get the lift. You wouldn't be able to do this with a four-wheel drive. Um, drive shafts just wouldn't line up. Now, yep, that is a big thing. I even looked into getting it converted, and it is possible, but it's probably not that easy unless you buy an entire four-wheel drive Dyna truck. There are positives to a two-wheel drive. There's less things that can break. It's better fuel economy, but boy, do I wish that this were four-wheel drive, and I'm sure everyone else does as well. Um, this is gonna turn off a lot of buyers, unfortunately, but that's the reality of this truck. Now that said, I bought it knowing it's two-wheel drive, and I'm sure other people want the style of a vehicle like this, despite it not being four-wheel drive. Maybe you're not intending to take it off-roading. Probably the biggest thing to consider is if this truck were four wheel drive, the value of it would be more than twice as expensive. Someone's gonna pay in the range of 3.5, maybe 4 million yen if it's four wheel drive, maybe a little bit less than that, easily. People buy Land Cruisers and other four wheel drive Toyotas for that price all day long in a condition like this one. This one is two wheel drive, that knocks the price way down, and as a result, you can pick up the truck for what is considered to be a pretty reasonable price, in my opinion. And that is everything you need to know about this Dyna. If you're interested in buying this truck for 1,650,000 yen, or have any questions, shoot us an email at info at pacificcoastjdm.com. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.